Hey there, and welcome back to Expert Challenges, an educational monster train series where we get a divine victory on every expert challenge. We're down to six left, as far as I'm aware, so that's pretty exciting. We just finished, yes, Stealthiest Bosses. As a matter of fact, as you, I think, can tell, I just finished recording that one, in fact, earlier today. So... That's exciting. We had this setup. We had Exile Stygian with Default Awoken. The plan with Stealthiest Bosses was to capitalize on the duality mutator in order to maximize the number of status effects I could use. I didn't even hit the strongest variant of this, which requires Cold Channel, because Cold Channel multiplies your Frostbite by four compared to what you're used to, because with each incant, you double the amount of shard you gain, and then per shard, you double the amount of frostbite you gain. So you can generate a ridiculous amount of frostbite. We unfortunately ended up with Titan Channel. Not that I'm mad about it, because it's still one. We had a very strong line with Lodestone Totem of all things. Actually, surprisingly good. Not something I anticipated running into for this particular run. But the sap generation was through the roof. We had a minus two spell chain drain in there which was applying a ridiculous amount of sap as well and we essentially could shut down everything almost instantaneously it was very silly eventually we settled on with sketches we got a founding seal i mean it all popped off in the end but it wasn't super relevant early on big shout outs to pyre shards surprisingly when you have double the status effects eight spikes for one ember not too bad and most other thing that's worth calling out is Glacial Seal, in fact, which I did put into both of my Lodestone Totems in order to essentially give myself more damage in the Pyre Room, basically, was the main idea behind it. So that was pretty effective as well. Now we're moving on to the last of the worst, in my opinion. There are a lot of them that are coming up, the last five, that are interesting, I think. None of them are terrible, in my opinion. Most of them are just okay. They're either good or interesting in some way. I think they're obviously de much better designed expert challenges than the earlier ones. But now we're moving on to Blighted Existence. The only thing that Shiny Shoe has to offer to us here is sorry, their apology for creating this. This is a bad one. More than anything, it is annoying. You have five extra dead weights added to your deck. You have eight calcified embers in your opening deck, and then you can't discard anything at the end of your turn. So everything is permafrosted. This is brutal because the idea is that if you can't play through these curses, you can't discard them, then they get stuck with you in your hand and you can't draw cards. So really quite bad. Now we do actually already have one of the cards we want here, which is foregone power. I normally do not like Soul Guard for this because he's difficult to incant with. On the flip side, you do want things that accelerate your draw, right? So I really do think you want some combination of Awoken and Foregone Powers. You probably, if I'm being real, should consider Windleton with Foregone Power. The only thing is that I think if you whiff on a Siren or something interesting that's able to kind of tank in front of Windleton, this gets real bad real quick. I favor Thornlord a lot here because it comes baked in with some scaling, which is nice. You might not see things like your Razor Sharp Edge or whatever. There is also some interesting, some, there are some interesting interactions I want to discuss before we hop into this run as well. Basically around the notion of adding a whole bunch of dead weights and curses. There are a few things that benefit from this in the game. Obviously, if you hit Dante, this is ridiculous. There's also a couple events that are beneficial with this. You can hit Penitent Remains and just gain some huge amount of some huge amount of scaling from that, which is interesting, especially with Endless. Uh, and then the other thing that's worth drawing attention to here is the Abandoned Stave event, which Obviously, you can get a ton of Ember from that, but if you're really strong, you're actually able to use the Calcified Embers option in order to create a whole bunch of excavated Embers that are really strong to play through. Very powerful for incant lines. So 
you've got that option as well. It's pretty unlikely to hit any of these, obviously, but, and it's even more unlikely that you're strong enough early on in order to get away with it, right? Things like the Excavated Ember event, I mean, you're probably very weak in the early game and you're liable to just pass away if you're not careful. So things we will need to be looking out for. We will probably Tunnel Vision Sirens or rather Stygian Banners in general, looking for something that can hold that back. Yeah, pretty much. So here's hoping we get something decent. This is another one of the expert challenges that is difficult enough that you can just get unwinnable scenarios, okay? Where no matter what you do, if you don't, if you just don't draft well, you just lose the run. So bear with me on this. I am going to be open to resetting if I need to, but this could potentially take a couple tries. I hope it doesn't. We'll see, I suppose. I would sure like to get a single recording of this done and dusted and take care of it. So, but this could be the this could be the bad one. This could be the one that does it to me. So we'll see. We got through largest lads though somehow, which is ridiculous, but. I do like Wendleton here, and I'm hoping for a pretty good opening set of drafts that we can work around. Maybe some razor sharps would be nice. But yeah, that's kind of all I've got here. So as always, do like, comment, and subscribe if you have not already. Those things are awesome, and as always, very appreciated. And we shall get started. All right, yeah, click the button. Lighted existence. All right, buddy, let's go. All I have to do is get through this one, and the rest are actually interesting again. I can't wait. All right. Hope you're all doing well today. I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Ugh, this it's really bad looking at your deck after this. 30 cards in my opener and I haven't even added my starters yet. Unreal. Okay. Woof. All right. Anyway, we are Exile Awoken, Exile Stygian here. The Foregone Powers will bypass some of the awfulness of this run by discarding some dead weights, avoiding them getting stuck in my hand too badly. The root seeds will help me draw faster, give me some built-in scaling. This is helpful for a lot of reasons, most of all because you might not draw into your other cool stuff that you happen to hit. So you want to have something here. We're going to be looking for anything that powers us up in the early game. So conscription notice is huge here. Advanced prototype is huge here, stuff like that, because those will hard carry us through the early game when we are the weakest. And we're the weakest then because we have all these calcified embers we need to chew through before we can actually draw normal things again. So keep that in mind. Also worth noting, minus ones are of huge value because they make the root seeds free, which essentially gives us the three ember we need to burn a calcified embers. So magic shops have a little more value than even usual here. All right, so we're facing ex double barrel Daedalus, actually. Spell Shield Fell and Chased Seraph, that's fine. We have Stings, Flash Freezes, Focus Growths. Uh, those are all awesome openers. Having a ping is great. Flash Freeze is excellent. I really appreciate that. Sting is really good here because it's essentially just a free incant and accelerates us. And Focus Growth is excellent. It's draw positive and heals. We always like having a little bit of a heal. Really good starter. No actual damage buff there, but that's okay. We're going to Tunnel Vision Stygian stuff. But hopefully we don't have too much nastiness here. It's fine as far as I'm glancing at it. Temples today are two, three, five, and seven. Four temples, at least one kind of late is important. We have a removal dupe on magic side on eight, which is excellent. Another removal dupe on the cave side on seven. That's really cool. Competes with a steel shop that's a little bit weak. If I could double up on these removal dupes and power up in a meaningful way, it's great. Another removal dupe on six. Very strange getting three of those back to back like that. It probably means we are a four hellbent run. This one on ring six has money. It competes with another steel shop. So we'll have to make the decision at some point whether we go to a steel shop here or just slam dupes on stuff. But we'll see. Magic shop competing with trinket shop that has vortex and cave. Both sides are pretty okay. No money with a trinket shop. No removals with the magic shop. It's fine. We get a magic and a steel shop on four. Good Stygian banner on the magic side with Vortex. Excellent. I love that. Early game, steel shop has the Stygian banner on two. We have a magic shop with Awoken banner on two. Also a an Awoken banner with Hellbent on three, competing with Horde and Health. We'll see what we need. I lean strongly into Stygian banners for scaling. There's a few ways to win this run that are fairly secure. Things like Thornlord plus Strangler are good picks. 
I actually, in this particular instance, would favor Thornlord first rather than Strangler because it survives a little better, accelerates you, and we're going to be playing low on shards anyway, but we'll see. Cool, advanced prototype is excellent. I would love nothing more than my train stewards to be pretty awesome here. Better than Pyrestone housing for sure. We're weak early, so I need the strength early. Strangler, Predator. I am not going in on Predator. We're going to take Strangler here. It's fine. We're going to look for Thornlord. I'm going to hope for Thornlord on Ring 4. We're going to take damage for this. I'm going to take this Armor Emblem. I do need to see... I need to see units, right? There's a lot of things this could show me that would be just great. Okay. Sting something down here and then Forgon Power to kill him. Something. Give me the money. Thank you. All right, we're going to train Steward up top. I'm going to train Steward middle. Good. Remember, we're not able to discard any of this stuff, so we're doing our best. Woof. Okay, we just have a full hand of garbage here. Great. Amazing. Wonderful news. I'm going to clear the whole top floor, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and play Calcified Embers and a Forgone Power on bottom. Sure. Ugh. Brain Steward it out is worthwhile here. I'm gonna flash freeze one of these enemies and then we root seeds upstairs. With any hope, this is able to at least get through something. Are we dead? No, we're not dead. I think we might be able to pull this off with the focus growth up front. We can. All right, good job. Now, unfortunately, that means we don't get to play out all these excavated embers, so we didn't make great progress here, but it is enough to not take a million damage. Okay, great, fine. There was an argument, by the way, for putting that train sword in the back instead. We're going to click on Glimmer, I think. It's good. In case we don't get end up with Quick or something, I like this. It's a good plus 30 target. I don't need another Flash Freeze. No Titans. Titans Gratitude, actually not terrible. The random discard could be relevant. It also is frontline damage. All right, you got me. I'm looking for Offering Token, if I'm being real with you. Steel Singer. There's no hope for Steel Singer on this run, even with two heal cards. Too much garbage. We're going to take Guard of the Unnamed and stick that in front of our boy, Windleton. That is a functional line. I'm going to go left. Am I? I would just be looking for like plus 25s here. I can use train stewards for this, right? It's true. I'm going to go right. and We're going to go to this magic shop. The Awoken Banner is unlikely to be anything I really care about. Husk Hermit's fine, but I don't want it. It's infusion is just a plus 30. Minus one. Let's go. Root seeds. Absolutely. Give me a minus two. No. Spell chain. I don't think so. Intrinsic. I don't think so. You need to show me a lot of value for me to consider early shards here. Like early money, for instance, is something that could get me to do it. But what if I just Titan's Gratitude here for cons and consume it? It just doesn't feel very effective. It's not bad, but like what I would I hold over 10 in piercing this is the real question. No, because it only does 75 damage. Yeah, it's a bit of a bummer. Right, 20 consume a sting. No, sting is good. I hold on glimmer. Glimmer gets the holdover. Yeah, what is double stack doing for me? Nothing valuable. We'll spin it, see what we hit. All right, the minus one is at least worthwhile into root seeds. The rest of this is no thanks. Worthless, permafrost. All right, we chill. We chill. Spell chain is not happening today. You might think root seeds. I'm going to tell you right now the answer is nope. 10 shards, we move on. Okay, pretty bad, but that's all right. We're gonna go ahead and click on spikes here. I'm reasonably certain we can chew through this with a variety of stuff. Okay, Windleton, guard, root seeds. We foregone power downstairs to kill one of them. It'll do. Buff upstairs, fine. Train steward downstairs. I guess does swing, right? Does it really? It blocks both the sevens, then it takes 11, which it lives. 
and then it attacks once, so it kills the front. All right, it does get it, yeah. And we'll foregone power for money in the middle. Okay. Swinging on that guy's great. Yeah, the glimmer, absolutely. 100% we glimmer here. We sting. Looking for armor generation. Incredible news. Flash freeze to buy me turns. Absolutely. We'll train steward middle so I can foregone power down below. Okay, train steward is doing excellent work. I can play out a calcified embers here and then foregone power something out. Nice. I think we win from here. Incredible play out of calcified embers. Progress. Okay. We got rid of two more. That'll have to do. It's a little slower than I would like, but it is enough. Steel Enhancer. It's not razor sharp edge, but we're going to click it. There's no chance I don't. All right. It's easy to play. Oh, offering token. Absolutely. One of the best cards you can get here. Okay. Horde is probably better, if I'm being honest, than the Hellvent. The Hellvent requires we have an actual target for Hellventing, so Offering Token is pretty much the only real consideration here. It's not very good. Awoken Banner is not the ideal infusion. I think we're just going to go left and hope for the best. First, Hell Pact. Well... We have a decent chance of seeing a spike eventually. I just don't think Tethys' scales is doing a lot here, right? At least not presently. It might eventually with Glimmer popping off, but I'm going to take the Hell Pact. All it takes is one of those spikes for this to really hit. And I'm going to go ahead and put a plus 30 in Glimmer because this could just be an X5 or something equivalently awesome. And we'll just have to see. Build a card. Sure. Buff. Yes. Ascend? I'm not sure, but possibly. I'm debating if this is relevant here. You could assemble a top floor. It's a good holdover target if we see it. It's essentially razor sharp, although we do have the glimmer. But the glimmer's relevance depends a lot on whether or not we are forced down predator or not. Although if it ends up on Predator, I do think we'll want the scaling anyway, so... I'm gonna go with Ascend, I think. Yeah. Space. Money at this point of the run, I think, is the winner. Yeah, that's a good card, as it turns out. That is, how they how do they say? Really good card. 25 shards, we move on from here. I am very interested in Magic Shops, if anyone's curious. We should be able to get out of this thanks to the existence of Armor Shark, but, you know, it's tough to say. I wonder if Train Steward is just better than Windleton here. That's a weird thought. I kind of think it is. <laughs> sure, actually. I think he is because he takes double scaling. We can keep Shark alive, which is pretty impressive, as long as he doesn't get double bombed here. I can stop 20 damage here, which is almost certainly correct. Yeah, that's a big swing, I think. All right, cool. Armor. If Shark, I mean, hey, he killed one wave, that's pretty decent. We're looking to incant and then double train steward here. Okay, goodbye mid-floor. It's a bit of a bummer, but it's fine. Ugh, this bomb upstairs is going to be real bad. Real bad. Alright, play the buff we need to play. He's taking, what, 12, 32 damage? Good grief. Let's blast the guy. Of course it would hit a foregone power. Yeah, suboptimal, if I'm being honest with you. The train steward can win, potentially. We hit the glimmer, which is just a ridiculously important play here. So that's kind of neat. I need to flash freeze the boss, or I think we lose. Hmm, bad. Okay. And now we have garbage in our hand. This is the real test. Can we actually defeat this nonsense? I don't know if I'm being honest with you. 
I have nothing that I can draw or play here. Wow, that's bad. Okay, alright, we're gonna try this differently. And we're just gonna accept the fact that I'm resetting combats because this is blighted existence against Daedalus. Double Barrel is rough. Let me be real with you. Double Barrel is bad. Ugh, you hate to see it. Now you could have gone to a steel shop and just jammed some plus 25s in this guy, which would have helped, admittedly, but... It's too bad I didn't have Thorn Lord. That would have been really nice here. I could have just blasted this bomb, but... We can get him over the 20 marker. I think we will still... I think we'll play them together here, is the angle. And then we do train Steward middle, and then we keep him above 20. It's dicey, but I think it's fine. We need to incant upstairs. If I ping ping... I think we actually want to deal with Mr. 3x2 here and let the train steward go. And then incant twice. Yeah, that'll do. Get the sting. That's great. We're going to go ahead and double train steward middle for a lot of damage. Sure, it's pretty decent. Okay, now can I keep the man among the living? It's a really good question. He dies. Unfortunate. The double bomb is a lot. It's a shame. Now we do draw a good play here. I know that we come up on the glimmer here, which is good. We're happy to have glimmer activity must flash freeze the boss or you're already losing i think we have no choice but to play calcified embers here right i simply must i elevator the old magic out get this guy upstairs now i could have played doubles actually which might have been better but i was thinking that i would want to avoid the ember drain right I came close. Do I think an extra man would have made the difference? Very possibly, right? Very possibly. And we're definitely passing away here. This is simply too much. It's 240. It's like 12 hits. The guy does too much damage. We're closer. Maybe we can assemble the squad a little better. You have to do weird stuff like this. This Daedalus, you're simply not strong enough. I'm also really quite bummed that our mark of the unnamed man does lose here this is what 15 and then 14 so 29 is a lot of damage there's very little we can actually do to save the day here yeah it's it's tricky we need to keep him alive if i could somehow keep him alive until the glimmer angle or the glimmer turn that would be pretty cool Hmm, possibly. We shoot one man here, and then I think we do kill one guy and then take the armor. This is a change from before where I let one extra man walk up. Train steward, train steward, sting kills on middle, which is maybe not ideal, but it does stop to... This is the scary turn, right? This turn right here. But I can do some work on this, in my opinion. So you can bomb for five here. And man, we're so close. We're so close. He does get smacked just exactly. Is there anything I can do to play this a little better? I'm not sure. Maybe. Maybe. If I can keep him alive one more turn, I think we can pull it off. Is That's the big swing, in my opinion, right? If I can get one more out of it, that would be the play. 
Hmm. Okay, so let's... Train steward here, and then elevator train steward. This creates the super floor, which is acceptable, I suppose. It's a lot of damage we can push out. I mean, it does somehow pull out the victory. Shocking, but train stewards, man. I don't think I would have actually predicted this. It's the 44 damage in the back that somehow managed to push this over the top. Okay, and we avoid all damage altogether. It's possible. And we get a first hell pact on both spikes. We're going to take the rail spike here because drawing fast and cheap is really good. The Awoken's rail spike. And then, honestly, I'm going to take the guard of the unnamed here and we're going to double up on armor generation. We're going to take Ember because I need to actually finish playing out these, em these calcified embers. And... I'm already going to draw fast enough for the moment. Okay, that's good. That's good. We're happy about that. I'm going to go to the right here. I need to look for holdovers, I think. The horde today says Sinner Salve is pretty ripping, actually. Sinner Salve lets me freely get out these calcified embers, which is awesome. And the other ones aren't very good, so whatever. Sure, great. Amazing. We did it. Give me Thornlord. No, it's not Thornlord. Okay. Do I wait? No, I think we have to take Predator. I mean, I think we don't have a choice. Okay, now I really need to see a holdover now. Because of that, we really don't have a choice. Give me holdover or give me death is basically where we're at. We're in a plus 10 Titan's Gratitude. It's worth it. Okay, we didn't see it. Amazing. So we're looking pretty bad, I would say. We're probably going to the magic shop next. I want to keep making things cheaper. I could buy removals, but the question is why? Accurate. We are going to put a flash freeze plus 10 here. I want to be able to do 20 damage. The removals here are tricky, right? I think it is a train steward. Eventually, they're going to all go away. The question is just the matter of how, what, and when. I'm going to get rid of a foregone power. The Stygian banner. I mean, there's nothing it could show me that would be very useful here. We already kind of have the double guard, which is our play. It's not infused. It'll have to do. We move on at 40. It's sub 50 at least. Don't take multi-strike. I mean, the, this is not good. And we had to take Predator, which is also very bad here. So, unfortunate. I am going to play bottom floor so I can at least... Well, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter that much. But I would sure like to draw cards. I'm going to play top. It's fine. It's fine. They're all free, at least. That's at least something. We'll incant upstairs. We missed a collector. It's fine. It's okay. I at least draw a bunch of cards. I'm going to ascend the old magic man and get him up there. Get him in, brother. Sure. I would like to glimmer downstairs to prevent more curses from coming into my hand. All right, we burn an ember here. We're going to draw past the dead weight. We play a dead weight. I could start buffing in the back. I think once you get to a certain point, I just need to make sure that I'm doing enough damage with the sweeper, and I think that I am. Play double train stewards here. I'm going to draw five cards. I'm going to play the Titan's Gratitude. Just don't hit a Woken's Rail Spike. Great job. All right. Train steward out. Incant a whole bunch. Well, I mean, I think we might get through it, right? It's not going to be pretty, but I think we are able to get the kill here. Or win the run, at least. Yeah, true. Okay, fair enough. We'll beat this squad of enemies. I'm going to stop one of these curse guys downstairs. 
We look relatively in control of our dead weights, if I'm being honest. So that's nice, at least. We'll kill another man in the back. I'm just going to incant because I think the armor is potentially worth more. It isn't pretty, but it wins, and that is all that matters. Okay. Well, we have a backline guard of the unnamed. I don't know what anyone expected. It wasn't this. Okay. Good chat. We didn't die. Preserved Thorns is probably going to be the correct play. It's four incants. Seems good. Guardian Stone? I mean, maybe that's better than the Self-Infuse? Because it's armor to Windleton? Hmm. Well... Okay, it is better, I think. We'll take it, I suppose. I'm gonna hunt for Holdover, because I think this is how we win this run. Show it to me. Monster Train, no! You can't keep doing it, Monster Train. It's illegal. Anyway, I'm gonna take a Remove Consume and an Awoken's Rail Spike. That seems pretty good. We're gonna re-roll this. There it is, Holdover. All right, we now have Holdover Old Magic incredible we're gonna make it free wonderful thank you monster train very cool give me a minus two or something no that's okay i could 10 in piercing the glimmer basically turns this into mega inferno which is good as it turns out let's do the guardian stone action i do think this is correct seems good to me I'm going to hoard here. Winged Indulgence, better than Petrified Crucible. I want to remove the other guard here to make sure I always play these two together. What's coming up? Steel Shop? There's money in the middle. There's money in the middle. I think we're okay. Yeah, we'll cut this guy. I was just thinking, I was like, I need to make sure I can afford something. Or not like I'm going to give him multi-strike or whatever, but you know what I mean. We have to be mindful of that. Uh, the Glimmer here definitely gets the upgrade. That becomes my removal dupe target, and we move on. 75 shards. It's under 80, which matters a little bit. Ancient Hate. Eh, sure. We could potentially infinite here, by the way. For anyone keeping track, we have the ability to. If I can cut enough, the problem is we have so many dead weights, it's going to be really hard to maneuver past it all, but... It's fine. It's fine, right? The incants are pretty decent here, admittedly. Sure, we'll click them. Guy does a shield check, which is fun. Look at him go. He's just pumping iron. It's great. Amazing. We missed the collector. It'll have to do. We at least clear in the back. I'm not that afraid. Okay draw past junk here. I do wish to glimmer something. I could hold the glimmer potentially. I just don't see a reason to. So I won't. And that's going to be that. Cool. Incants are your friend. Click them. Good. I need to just draw into the most important card, which is old magic. And we're going to go ahead and do this by, wait for it, Ascending a train steward onto the floor, which is very fun in my opinion. Very fun, extremely cool. Draw five, sure, seems good. Or don't draw five, I guess. Fine. We punch a man. We frostbite a friend. Sure, it's not a lot of armor, I will be first to admit, but it's pretty decent. Scale in the back, scale in the back. We just go ahead and Glimmer to send this floor to the Shadow Realm. We're just looking to discard a whole bunch. I feel pretty good about the state of where we're at on... What's it called? Discards here, right? I feel like we're able to and are successfully playing most of our cards and then redrawing everything every turn, which is where we want to be. Fortunately, these train stewards are doing excellent work here, thanks in large part to they have multi-strike, which is really good, it turns out. Yeah, we have a lot of armor. I'm feeling decent. 157 armor in front, and we're making a bunch of money by simply playing the old magic a whole bunch of times. 
it isn't pretty, but it does get through this, right? There's a reason I used Mr. Multi-Strike Man, it's because I simply do not do enough damage otherwise to win this fight. So we want to leave in Mr. Train Steward to do that specific thing. Bramble Lash, Awake, Ensnare. I mean, Ensnare is nice just because it is an incant and it does some things. Drain is excellent here. It discards, it's really good. Yeah, okay, cool. Great card addition. Removal Dupe. There's a lot of things, a lot of things I could dupe here that feel pretty good, huh? Old Magic is a lot of damage and a lot of money. Glimmer is a lot of power. Awoken's Rail Spike is a lot of everything else. I do want some... I mean, I can removal dupe two times in a row these next two floors. I think we do want to look for a steel shop at some point in this run. So let's at least buy some stuff. Perfect. Amazing. Some baseline health and then an incant armor too. Wonderful. I don't have to do anything else. No rerolls required. Great. Give me an overstack now. No. Fine. Wormkin consumable. There's possibly some stuff there. Stygian consumable, no. Awoken consumable, no. Uh, ew, no, no, no total recall, no thank you. Nope, I was thinking broken memories might be neat, but no, not doing it. You can't make me. Okay, we're going to go double removal dupe here, so my money doesn't really get spent going forward. The question then becomes, is there anything I need to remove from here? Probably a train steward is fine. And then we chill on shards, and we're okay. I might as well cut another train steward. The, the thing is, is, I need to at least hold one, right? I need one so that the guy walks up and becomes my multi-strike target. And then I think we chill now. Because I'm going to this removal dupe coming up. So, fine. Cool, great, excellent news. We should easily beat this, I think. Tons of cards. Wonderful. Click cards. They are your friend. Cool. Good. It's a lot of armor we're generating, which is great news. Mr. Train Steward. I can actually just keep him here for the time being, which is pretty neat. And then just draw cards otherwise. And then hold on to this. I should see the old magic. We're pretty close to it, right? Yeah, all right, cool. And then I can elevator him. I like to keep his damage shield is mainly the reason I'm doing this. We will glimmer here, I think. I'm just going to go ahead and flash freeze the boss whenever I physically can. I should have played that foregone power upstairs, I think. That's like six armor I didn't get. That's okay. We're doing all right, yeah. That guy in front is probably going to be alive a while, and it'll just have to be okay, I think. That's just the way of Monster Train. Yeah, he does live. It's okay. They're incanting essentially as much as I am, so that's always fun. Although if I lead with a sting, I think we actually do pretty well here. Then we can glimmer here. Hey, fair enough. play it this way and then we will draw four. I'm trying to play this so that I get a lot of space and value. Cool. We take 17. It's not bad. We're still a little slow and it's because I'm not buffing Windleton. I'm buffing in the back. But that is okay I think. Flash freeze the boss. Seems good. Yeah, I'm not playing the sweeper. I'm playing the backline guy who's going to actually win the run for me so keep that in mind yeah it's okay to do this it slows me down a bunch as long as i can eventually clear the squad it's going to be no big deal but we're doing 200 damage in the back which is as they say pretty decent i think we should chew through this, yeah? Yeah, we do. We get it. Great work. It's dicey, but we get it. 
and we draw really well here cool yeah and then you just kind of full send there's a lot of sting action and other things going on but we live because of train steward if we're being honest it's because i'm getting a free 113 damage every turn which would be really slow without that so pretty cool now Ancient Synergy is not bad if I could ever afford it. There will be a magic shop in my path eventually. I do have Ember already. And I have minus ones in all my root seeds. So there's really not many. I guess there's the focus growth, but that's not a big deal. Maybe a drain is one of them. Ancient Synergy is not bad. If I see a minus two, it goes elsewhere. I'm going to take the Ancient Synergy because I think it's a good card to have. And we're drawing pretty well here. I could take Ember. I think it is just card draw, though. Yeah, we'll take it. All right, we go right. Yes. Cool. Cave says what? Cave says Heartstone. Heartstone, good. Now, I could take 10 health on everything, but I'm not going to do that because I do have heals. And Pyre Health is pointless i'm not taking blood for blood cool we'll just make guard of the unnamed tank gear and that's fine with me cool overstack is overstack we now cut the last train steward he is no longer required well done sir we're gonna drop a foregone power because i now have this drain i'm gonna look for a minus two they show it to me the absolute lunatics now, Awoken's Rail Spike drawing X plus 4 like this is kind of nonsense. We're, we're never going to infinite, but this lets me incant really fast. Ooh, that's interesting. Big fan. The dupe was originally, in my opinion, going to be a glimmer here because it just infernos the floor. But we have to understand we're playing into this sweeper angle. We now have multi-strike here, which is pretty cool. Hmm, interesting, interesting. The glimmer's pretty good, I'll admit. If I do, like, glimmer and then I ascend a second guard upstairs that is two armor to the floor per incant this is a really good awoken trail spike though i'm worried that i'm not going to have enough space for this is the problem right space meaning that i'm already like having five cards of junk in my hand that i can't discard and then i draw over more of it so i don't actually know if this is the right play i think it's ancient synergy so i can actually just like murder a floor i'm gonna click that actually believe it or not intrinsic drain is a consideration is a good card i am going to be looking for another holdover for instance for this specifically i don't know about it. drain having the intrinsic though we can live long enough to not need this i think we chill and the dupe here is probably just the glimmer now, right? It's actually probably the guard right now. There's never a chance that I ever have to do more than this. So, sure, we'll take the guard right now. I'm good with that. Yeah. We'll take the glimmer next. I'm not going to go with any intrinsic. We chill. Now, of course, you're going to have the problem of one of the guards is in the back, and that's just kind of the nature of the thing. But I'm doing this mostly for the AoE armor angle. Although... Although, I mean, if you draw like this, it's pretty cool. Because then you draw through and you just basically look for whatever you can get pretty much yeah all i have to do is find the old magic eventually there it is cool elevator the man upstairs and now this pops off in kind of ridiculous fashion in my opinion cool good job this is ideal for this wave and for sarah for divinity it doesn't really matter in my opinion because well it just doesn't but it specifically does not matter because 
On the Divinity, you're going to get swept out, and that's the thing that threatens you. The front guy is always going to be the one that gets smacked. Our goal is essentially to... I mean, basically, the plan is to have him simply kill waves and one guy tanks for the whole thing. He's not going to die, so I'm not worried about him. He generates so much armor for himself that it's really not that bad at all. We're actually doing pretty good on clearing the waves in general. We're even holding back the winged horde angle. The multi-strike does a lot of work here. Let's be real. We'll just continue to discard stuff, I suppose. Does not really matter what I hit. Sure, fine. Seems good. Old magic. We're doing a respectable amount of damage here. I don't care about what is downstairs. You can kind of see what I mean here, though. Draw four. If I drew six here, we'd be okay, but there certainly have been turns where it's not been as effective. I don't know. We'll see. see we have plenty of armor to win this combat. This guy stands no chance whatsoever. Honestly, we'll hit him. Sure. I'll play that. I'll Glimmer, why not? Hit him for 40, sure. Five, oh, every single one of my dead weights is in hand. It's a bummer, but that's okay. 235 armor. I mean, we take a truckload of damage, but we do enough damage to win, and that's what matters here. Now, the one downside to the Ascend angle is that I have to play top floor, right? Pyre Shards, Focus Growth, Awake, we skip this. It's good. Ice and Pyre is pretty solid. That is a nice spell to just kind of have. It's a good minus one target here. There's no 10 in piercings left. It's a good plus 10 as well. It's just a good spell. Sure, 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 sure. I'll take that, fine. We go left. I'm going to go for the removal dupe. Absolutely. We're going to vaguely look at this. I'm going to try to think about ways I cannot die and avoid death. That will be a challenge. A holdover is one of them into a drain. Under 100% this beats Divinity now, which is, yeah, definitely the play. Incredible work. Amazing. So happy about that. I'll put a plus 10, another flash freeze. I'm going to re-roll you. Double stack. Interesting. Minus one. I mean, this is basically just make ancient synergy free, or I think the right play might actually just be to make focus growth cost one. This leaves a lot of one costers in, which Awoken's Rail Spike can cut the cost on. I'm good with that. Double stack. No, I don't think so. Removals, tempting. Jack strips, rationing scales, bloating fungus, reroll. Thorn casing, channel heart, pretty good. Light stone casing. I guess I didn't consider that option. Anything fun for that? <laughs> if I had lightstone casing, I could have put a minus one on the glimmer and then made a zero cost copy of it. It doesn't matter though, right? Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, whatever. I'm fine with it. It's, it's okay. The dupe is still going to be the Glimmer here. It's just a ridiculously good card, as it turns out. Yeah. I'm not going to do anything shenanigan-y hit with it. The Thorn Casing Channel Heart, however, is good because I have Preserved Thorns and Stings. So those are worth it. And then we can remove some stuff. With the Holdover on a Drain, I'm a lot less inclined to hold on to these Forgone Powers. So we're going to go ahead and toss both of those. And I'm going to buy another removal on one. We have holdover on a discard play. So, and I'm never, like, I'm never touching a foregone power until I've touched my drain. So you'll see why this makes a lot more sense. We should still manage this pretty effectively. I think we have this, right? I'll put a plus 10 in an ice empire. That's pretty decent. Sure. Seems reasonable. Okay, cool, great. I'm happy with the state of our run. 120 out of 100, I think we can beat Chaste. And yeah, all right, Blighted Existence, fair enough. The real wiggle here was on Daedalus, but that's just going to be okay. 
I'm not gonna slow myself down. We are just gonna play upstairs and then do the elevator thing. It's fine. Doesn't really matter to me why anything else. Like, oh no, you're gonna cut my stuff. It's cool. The neat thing is I just kind of leave this guard in my hand until I actually draw the important stuff, which is... What's what I trying to say? When I draw the old magic. So... Yeah, I'll just play the Preserve Thorns, of course, and we sting a whole bunch. It's a lot of damage. I'm gonna draw four cards. Fine. Sure. Cool. Now, we do have a lot of this stuff in our hand, unfortunately. It's okay. We find the important thing. We're going to Elevator the Man. I'm going to go ahead and Glimmer from up here. Blast this other guy. Root here. Discard here. We should be fine now. Yes, we are. Great. A little slow, but acceptable. Push numbers, and then we get the holdover drain here. Seems okay. Holdover drain is going to help a ton for getting this garbage out of my hand. It's great. We're all extremely excited about it. Blow something up. Discard this. Excellent news. It looks like we're in control. The question is simply, do we scale fast enough? The answer is debatable, I suppose, but fine. We have a lot of armor, at least, which is nice. I will certainly take that. Give me damage. Damage. Click the cards. It's incredible. Awoken's Rail Spike. Seems good to me. Discard garbage. I'm gonna lock down the Ember Drain guy. Shoot this other man. I did it in the wrong order. I don't really care. Drain the boss, as it were, actually. Let's make sure Chaste does not defeat me. Alright, cool. Sting. Do damage, do damage. Upgrade. Glimmer here. It's fine. Drain the boss. Okay, we should live, I think. Yeah, all right, we did it, great. Let's lock a friend down for no reason other than that we can. Continue draining the boss to zero, good. And this should win, wait for it. Wait for it, it definitely gets there, trust me. See, look, the game is actually super easy. We just take 336 damage to armor. No one is actually concerned about this. Thank you, Drain Extremely Cool. <laughs> that would have been very scary. Yeah, this is still pretty slow, but it's fine. We have the pieces. Look, I'm not concerned. I don't know why you are. Don't be concerned. Imagine if I had gone in on this at 200 shards. That would have been very bad. But we get through this. I feel like we have all the pieces we need to win. And Divinity is going to be more vulnerable to my drain shenanigans than anything else. So, interesting. Cool. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and guard middle. Yes, this is going to look weird. I'm going to ascend him. I'm doing this specifically to dodge Ember Drain. Right? And now, behold, we go second guard, ascend Windleton, glimmer upstairs, and we're now in control of this combat. This gives me more power in my front line. Not that I really feel like I need it, if I'm being honest, but it is still nice to have. Draw me a bunch of cards. It's good. Thank you, Awoken's Rail Spike. Extremely cool. We're at least doing a respectable amount of damage here, and then we continue to drain the boss, and we are in control as long as we can defeat waves well enough, which is good. Buff my floor, please. 
blast middle. Great. I'm going to immobilize one of them and then continue draining upstairs. My goal is to prevent these floors from overstacking the spikes like I'm worried about. It's a really good glimmer play upstairs. Very nice. I'm going to shoot Spikes person because that could be enough to cause me to win this run. Okay, we should... We have it locked. Good. Great. This is a really good glimmer turn. It kills a whole bunch of things and prevents a bunch of Spikes damage. Incredible. These mini-bosses are just going to essentially live here for a good long while. We're going to still drain the boss so that my Relentless is a feasible game plan, but, you know, yeah, it is what it is, man. I'm going to double sting middle to kill that man. That's important, I think, anyway. This is going to be a scary floor, huh? Okay, uh, fair enough. <laughs> I'm in danger a little bit. Four enemies ascend. This fills top floor. Okay. All right. You got me. Top floor is full. Do more damage. Just please. If I sting first, I actually push numbers through. All right. Well, it's we kill four, so we're okay. Seems good. All right, now bottom floor is a bit dicey. I can kill one of them. That's actually super worth it. Prevent the curses from coming through. I'm going to immobilize, I don't know, something on mid floor. Seems good. Continue to incant. Mini boss is just going to kind of be here for a while, and that's going to have to be okay. I think we win this, right? Yeah, we have it. We hit a really good glimmer, by the way. Big fan of that. Continue scaling. Ice and Pyre is your friend. Awoken's Rail Spike is good. Great. We get to play a whole bunch of cards. Then I continue to sap in the back. We almost have to actually get through every single member of his sap damage, right? So we actually were taking sweep damage from the divinity, and we are going to still continue to do so, right? Look at this. We do so little damage that eventually he will hit me for one. Look at that. Bam. He gets me. Incredible. Every single sap I put down there was super important in order to keep this afloat. All right. Excellent news. We pulled it off. Amazing. And I think there was only the one reset on Daedalus, if memory serves. So that's pretty good. That's better than most Blighted Existence runs. We'll put it that way. So, and I feel no regret or hesitation about having done so. It is fine. This run, this expert challenge, garbage. It is so heavily penalizing up front that finding the weird little way of pulling it off is very difficult. We pulled it off with like a 44 damage, what is it, train steward in the back? Huge shout out to Advanced Prototype for carrying us when we were the weakest. The first hell pack did excellent too. I took it prospectively and we did see that Awoken's Rail Spike, which was excellent. I don't think I ended up really needing the Ember because I took it in order to play the Curses out, but then we immediately saw Sinner Self. I couldn't have anticipated that, but it's fine. It didn't hurt that bad in the end. We were drawing so many cards anyway, it wasn't that big of a deal. The Old Magic was super important, by the way, for anyone keeping track. This card fully carried our run. Essentially, it's Razor Sharp Edge, but better. Amazing and allowed me to assemble a floor in a very powerful way. So that was really cool of them. I really appreciate that. So neat there, good. The extra holdover on Drain was big and glad I took this card. Good choice. Even random Titan's gratitude was pretty decent. The glimmers were definitely worth it, of course. Otherwise, not much to say. Guard of the Unnamed in front of Wendleton is a classic strategy when you have Strangler, but it does desperately require AoE damage, 
scaling something. You have to be able to buff Windleton. And the problem with Stygian is you don't have much of that. So it's a little bit reliant on Razor Sharp Edge or things like Spell Chain Awoken's, uh, not Awoken's Rail Spike, but Steel Enhancer. Stuff like that can make it work. It's dicey, I would say. You saw how slow our scaling was. We could have duped the, what is it called? The old magic if we wanted to. It would have been fine. It's just meh right? It's not that big of a deal. I think we were doing enough damage. I, you know, it's interesting. What would be stronger? Glimmer gives more shards, but also just, it's such a huge hit. This is a big swing when we play it. There's a good question for you. If you are a savvy player, what would you have duped here? Would you have duped the old magic to double your scaling, or would you have duped the Glimmer? Old magic, obviously you play it every turn, which is nice, I suppose, but it doesn't really do anything after a certain point, right? There is the advantage of drawing it faster, but we're fast. We go through our deck quickly, even in spite of the fact that I have, what is it, magic hand, like it's fine. We, we hustle our cards. So there's that. I don't really think that is the big play here, but certainly it, it will improve our damage numbers in the end, which is important. You know, he doesn't get any scaling from anything else, really, so it's good. The Glimmers, I think, helped with Waves. I think I was I was definitely more concerned with Waves tripping me up and passing me by. You could all have argued that boof buffing his damage also improves clearing of Waves. Fair. It's a little slower, but fair. I don't know. I could see going either way. I think you win either way, so it's not that big of a deal here, but kind of an interesting thought process. What is actually better here? So anyway, we're fine. We get the W. We take these. And I will let you all go there. Incredible. We got through the hurdle of the last worst expert challenge. Incredible work. So hey, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. As always, you can give the video a like if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And stay tuned for what's next. Whew, take care, folks.